<laughs> All right, hello everybody. Thank you for being here in our disassembly required panel in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Um, we just finished watching a panel that had Josh Blaylock, which has been a big part of us being making books. So, um, is it everybody here in the audience? Does everybody know about us after action report? Do I need to explain the books or anything? Everybody knows? Okay, so we're going to skip that part. And that, unless we, do we want to do a quick? Now we'll skip it. No. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll, but we will introduce ourselves. So I'm Josh Agabin. This is Roger Taft. And we are the main co authors of all this after action report stuff that we got going on. Um, in 2020, he called me and says, Hey, you want to do a project? It'll take a year. It's 2023, and now we're at four books. Well, one book took a year. So one book took a year. We got four books. Um, and then, and I'll let Roger talk a little bit, but this is Greg Augustin. He's helping us and making a book that he started 10 years ago called Command Files. It's a G.I. Joe character guidebook. And this is the first printing proof, because that's what happens. So to my left is Hawk Sanders of Rising Sun um, Publishing, uh, who's been helping us a lot with uh, getting these books made a tremendous amount. So, Roger, your turn. What was I supposed to say? <laughs> um, talk about uh, how you're the cheerleader of our crowd. Oh, right, yeah. So, now, what so, was I really supposed to talk so, about? So, so my, my joke with him is that now he has to have pom-poms, and he has to go, hey, raw, hey, raw, hey, raw, 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 raw. Not going to happen. Look, I got laughs in the audience, so you got laughs in the audience. Okay, oh, good. introduce him. I'm, I'm Roger Taft. I came up with this idea like in 1999, but didn't have the ability to, to do it because I, I wanted to do an all-inclusive book of everything G.I. Joe. They kept making G.I. Joe at that point, so it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so in the meantime, a bunch of other guidebooks came out. A bunch of friends made guidebooks, and none of them had made anything about comics. And I thought, well, if they can do it, then why don't I do it? So here we are. And now we've made five books and working on the next one. Greg, and, okay. hey, Greg. Greg, my turn. Yeah. Um, how I got into um, Command Files, as Josh was saying, I, I saw there was a kind of a void in terms of the G.I. Joe encyclopedia out there. I don't think there was anything published officially since like 2000. Eight. So I wanted to do a guide by myself. I mean, there's stuff from Star Wars and Avengers and X-Men had these guidebooks out there for characters. And I, for myself, just for my personal kind of um, entertainment, I decided to design um, files and that, that represented encyclopedia entries for G.I. Joe characters. The first one I did was like Gung Ho in 2013. And um, I just started posting them on Instagram on like his tank and sharing them out on the Facebook group. So. I started to amass a bunch of character designs over the years, um, and I amassed over like 10 years, like 200 ones, um, Joes, Cobras, um, etc. And one after one day in July, I posted something in the Facebook group, was just some sample pages. I did it in a mock, like digital book on a Facebook group to get some kind of feedback on it. And lo and behold, Josh swoops in there and says, "Hey, that's a book that that we're all waiting for. We want to." Um, he, tagged a lot of uh, pulp or authors of current G.I. Joe books from like the toys and um, uh, kind of how to make Joes and, and said, you know, that's like the missing thing in terms of all these publications. And so we got to talking and by the time uh, 2023 came around February and almost the day that I posted my first profile, 10 years later, we kickstarted the project. Um, and it was like, was pretty successful. Well, was received. I mean, we funded in May, June timeframe, and um, and uh, even before that, Joe, I was here a year ago pitching this concept to most of you guys, and we're just my new face and meeting all all you guys and all the Joe fans and saying that they hey, would they want this book? And so here we are a year later at AR 2023. This is te technically the printer book. book. The a this is our printer so. proof. So. I mean, I literally just saw this yesterday in my hand, and I'm going through this, and I can't believe my, like, freaking passion, passion project is here in my hand. So, um, thank you to the Joe fans that they vibed with me that they wanted something like this, and they saw that, um, literally, this is something that all encompassing. So, the basis of this is basically the file part. So, when we bought our, our toys back then, and we needed a story about the, 
um, like rock and roll or flash or Scarlet or background. Um, that was everything that we that bounced off of, you know, with Larry, we all know Larry Homer wrote the file part. But the, that was like the launching path for the cartoon, for the comics, and all the other kind of iterations. So I wanted to capture that in that book. So over the 40 years of Joe history, what you'll have here is the baseline file card story, but I'll also have representation <laughs> of what um, like Duke looked like in Sunbow, what he looked like in um, the Resolute. Um, miniseries, cartoon miniseries, the deep version, and all the other, um, even Sigma Six is in here. So I wanted to do a little nod and a, almost a thank you to the fandom um, and also the creators of the G.I. Joe lore and the mythology and all in one book. So that's what that's what this is, uh, what this mm -hmm. represents. It's volume one. There's and this is volume one. Cover. As I said, I have like over 200 characters and uh, the page count for Action after action, after action report books was like 144, so I had to split in the middle and say we're going to put half the characters in volume one, half the characters in volume two. But when I realized working on volume one, I had so much information and so much research that I did to put this book together. We actually, even though we promised Kickstarter backers we'd have a 144 page book, we ended up with 180 books. 180 pages. 180 pages. 40 of more new pages. content. 36. Not even that too. Um, remember, I worked on this for like over 10 years and created these graphics. When we went to actually putting together the actual book, we found that some of the um, graphic assets and some of the things I made were really low res. So we decided um, at the at, 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 once we we're putting this together to reach out to um, several new artists to commission new brand new artwork. So there's like over 30 pieces of brand new artwork, character artwork, big character artwork in here. Um, we've reached out to Brian Atkins, Robert Atkins, Mark Pennington, the um, toy designer in the late 80s for the Joe figures. Um, Mrs. Oh, Josh Blaylock has one. Has a, has a, uh, uh, he's drew the fridge in this one, just, just to let you know, which is really cool. Uh, we even have Adam Rich's drop a piece, a piece in there as well. So um, I'm really kind of feeling blessed and really humbled that I got all these names, Joe creators that you know I didn't know like last year actually <laughs> participating in this book. Um, and getting their blessing on that, so it's pretty cool. So that's Command Files. We also have two other books. Uh, we'll get to Hawk here in a second we, that we need to talk about. So Volume 3, which was kickstarted last year, is, as you can see, we have it here. We're calling this the Special Edition. These are the ones that came to us rather quickly. The other ones are somewhere on the boat. So that's Volume 3, which is 2010 to 2022. Um, we also have the Newsstand Edition, now, if everybody understands newsstand, we're calling we're now calling the original version that we sold in 2020, this one here, the direct market version, because it doesn't have a UPC code. Now we have a UPC code. So, and uh, it, it corrected a lot of errors. And of course, as rookie bookmakers back in 2020, we, you know, so this has, doesn't have any new content, but has a lot of corrections and a new, a slightly new cover. And a UPC code, I mean, come on, isn't that cool? <laughs> Okay, Hawk. So Hawk has a, uh, updates on what's happening with all these other books, and then we will get to what's coming next. And, and I want to, you know, can I talk a little yeah, bit? Yeah, about yeah, this? of course. Which uh, one? I, yeah, let me have uh, command files. Command files. Let's talk about command files. Okay. What, what do you guys think of these articles in these books? Have you, have you all awesome. read them? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty amazing. I think the articles and some of the deep dives that they were taken back into that. I was going to pull out some artwork and uh, just roughly talk about uh, some of the artwork that we had redone in, um, in this book, Freefall. So how many times have you seen Freefall in a character design <laughs> sketch? I know we talked a lot about, about not doing something that was there before. So usually when everyone draws Freefall, he's, well, free-falling. And there's a song <laughs> that usually plays right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and what I thought was really interesting is, is when, when, we, when we commissioned these art pieces, we were able to get some new artworks and different poses and different stuff and, and uh, got some really unique art pieces that came out of that, um, you know, for it. So if you haven't seen Command Files, please swing by. I also want to say, this is, this is one hell of a group to work with. These guys are awesome. Like, you know, this team right here just absolutely rocks. They got it all together. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Now I don't know how well you guys can see, but I'm going to hold up the file card history page that's in this book. 
Yeah, so that was an added thing late. Um, I had all this information in terms of researching this and noticed that, that along the way, in terms of the release of the toys, you notice the back of the designs of the file cards changed now and again, the content changed. So I actually have a little history timeline of what changed year over year each toy release. Kind of noted that, because I don't think that's ever been done before. No, just wanted to lay that out. About the only place you could find it was on YoJo, and you had to go from character to character to character to see the different file card styles. So the, right. so the question is, is, where's all this goodness, right? <laughs> That's what everyone wants to know. And what is it that we have up here on the screen? So these are, these are pictures and proof samples that were coming from China about where we were at in the process. You can see you have volume three up there, uh, second printing you can see, as well as all of the Kickstarter campaign stuff that was coming through. This is probably the first time some of you guys have seen this stuff or seen it in color. So you're probably wondering, whoa, okay, what is that? Uh, and uh, we can talk a little bit more about that. I'm also gonna play a couple videos. And the reason why I'm playing this is uh, we switch factories in printing. And I wanna talk about that just very briefly. Uh, stuff's coming in. We did switch factories uh, and we had a couple of hiccups in switching factories. Um, uh, as you can see, stuff's printed. We just have to identify when it's getting to us and that kind of falls upon me. I want to show you a couple of videos as they thumb through some of this uh, some of this product that you guys can take a look at. Here is so this is this is this is kind of what uh, this factory does. Every factory is a little bit different, and they're sending me a proof copy to show that you know, hey, here's a prototype. This is what this is what this is looking like, or here's what it is. Same thing that he's doing here. Uh, so it can be a little Same challenging book. to make some some decisions off of that, but uh, you can see that this is this is what we get, and um, you know they kind of uh, show some of the process and some of the problems that they think are going on in those pages. Give you a little bit of peeling the uh, the layers off the onion to show how this is done. Like any good project, and I will say this, it's always done in revision. The more revision. Usually you, you catch more things. Typos are like dust, hard to get rid of. <laughs> uh, again. Which is why we actually did the second printing. Yeah, that's right. For volume one, which is about this. A, yeah, the, this what you're seeing right here, second printing, that resolved a lot of those typos and issues like that. And, uh, you know. Plus we also did, thank you to all your supporters with the first volume one direct market we sold out, almost sold out. We're going to archive a bunch of them and then we're going to sell the, the newsstand exclusively. So if you're here and you want to get it uh, online, you know, you should order on the website because once we get the newsstand in hand, we will retire the direct market version. Now, uh, we know you're all complete as collectors, so you've got to get them both. <laughs> One, one more thing they want to see. And, um, you know, everyone wonders, what's this thing? So, if you don't know this, this was part of the Kickstarter campaign. For command files. For command files, this is uh, Joe versus the Spy Balloon, written by Roger Taft, uh, <laughs> done by Ryan Dunlavy. If you don't know, he did a lot of IDW er, covers. And uh, there's a little bit of a political satire piece that's going on. So, where are they at now? Well, last, last, my last communication with them, they were printed and supposedly sitting on the dock. Um, so I'm waiting on updates for when they're actually getting to us, us. And that is completely on me. So hopefully we'll get them and get an update soon about them. But they are coming and you will receive them and they will be wonderful books for you to uh, ponder and read and get ready for what's coming next, yes. shall we? Right, and so just to clarify, that's uh, volume three and second printing. Command files has not been printed. It is only the printer proof that we're showing here, so that will probably likely be January or February before it gets printed or something, because we, you know, we, we just literally got it, like Greg said, like two days ago, so we have to go through it and look at it. So. And that, but it looks pretty good. It doesn't seem like there's a whole yeah. lot. Yeah, if we didn't correct anything, I think it would be okay to go to print. That's good news. Yeah. And we do have these little ash cans. Everybody here can get one. Yeah. Okay. You ready to talk about what's yeah. next? Talk about okay. what's next. I'm gonna parade this around like one of those models in uh, a round set. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, so I've started to dub 
our after action report like the MCU. We just finished phase one. The Avengers movie has happened. And these are the books that you see here. So now we're moving into phase two. So we actually kind of talked about this originally in volume one and we put it in the back of future, but now it's serious. So we have volumes four and five and everybody's like, well, why, why you know, what's four and five? So four and five, four is International Comics Europe. They got a whole team of people. I got a big collection, Roger collection, and a bunch of other people who got to help us with this. And volume five is International Edition. Also, it's called North South America plus Asia, and we'll have Battle Action Force in there. So we're going to sneak that in there. Europe has so many international comics that we can't fit it all, so we're bumping Battle Action Force to the volume Thanks. five. And then we're, we're starting another chain of, of books. Uh, called Live the Adventure. It's a G.I. Joe merchandise guide, and that's probably what, two, three, two or three? Probably going to be at least two, maybe three volumes. That'll be the Halloween costumes and the sleeping bags and games. And, and so he, th and that's like what he likes to collect. Yeah, when you go to look at his collection, he's got like sleeping bags. I'm like, <laughs> like pillowcases and toothbrushes. And we have a, 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 another guy, a uh, big collector, his name's Dan Moore who's also being a big part of this, and we have several other the declassified guys who when you come to these conventions and you see all this crazy shit that, you know, that's in the, it, it's in the, it, that's beyond this, you know, you know, comics and toys and stuff. So that's where we're gonna build those guys, which again, is not really out there. Nope. And Greg, you are going with Command Files 2? Oh, yeah, Volume 2, as I mentioned earlier, you had to split to two books, so the first half, um, of this, it, it basically what I call the A teams. Um, the second half would be, uh, well, volume two is more of the the pilots and the drivers and the spe uh, special sub teams like D, F, and Eco Warriors, um, and so forth. And then there's a third volume. Um, don't forget about Cobra. So through that ten years I've been working on this, I did do some Cobra files, so that's on its way. Um, so volume three, well, I'll, ha I'll have that going too. So in the next 2025. So, yes, by maybe by 2025, we'll have, what, 10? Maybe, right maybe, maybe there, we can yeah. get 10 after action reports in four years? We've been busy. And it all happens because of the Kickstarters. You guys have done a fantastic job of supporting us with Kickstarters, and then we sell the books on the website, and we come to the conventions, and, you know, that helps us keep going. You know, we're not really, we're not, we're not making any money on this, but we are, able to pay for all this, this stuff, you know, the printings and everything like that. So thank you all for your support. Uh, is that our 20 minutes? You are on, the button. Button. Yeah. on the button? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the, the assembly required people in here. So let's ask, <laughs> let's, uh, let's ask some questions. Any, any questions? Okay. I would like to know, uh, John Joe's lore is so encompassing that it goes into animation, it goes into other publishing areas, novels, books, film. Uh, is there an opportunity for this expanded uh, universe of uh, command files in the future if the first three volumes do well? Well, clearly a cartoon guidebook is missing in our community. Um, we or maybe going to do that. Uh, I can't confirm because the author who's doing that uh, is... We cannot he's confirm. He's, de <laughs> he's, he's debating. It's not committed to he's, Yeah, he's debating. Um, he did help out with this book, so that will help. But, uh, that will help. Uh, but he's, he, he's already got a lot of it built for the cartoon. Now, regarding like the novels that you just asked, they are actually intermixed in some of these books, right? Uh, like the Live the Adventure, uh, not the Live the Find Your Fate books are in volume one. Um, some of the co coloring guide books and things. There's characters in those novels that nobody knows about. Every single novel has a different yeah. new character right. that no one's probably ever seen unless you've read those novels. Right, yeah. right, right. So, you know, maybe we can get to that. The, uh, another thought, um, Obviously, everybody always asks us, is the IDW continuity with, you know, the Hasbro universe with ROM and Transformers and, you know, Unicron eating everybody at the end kind of thing, ending multiple continuities and stuff like that, <laughs> that have been running for, you know, years. So, you know, again, we, we, 
you know, you have to choose what we want to make. We, we are humans with jobs and other things, life's going on. Oh, and by the way, I want, I want everybody to give a big yo-jo to Greg because his mom just passed away last week. So let's give him a big yo-jo. We made it here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so that kind of stuff keeps us, you know, getting in the way. Um, and we keep pushing through and, you know, Hawks helped out a lot. Everybody's helping out. And we, uh, so in order to get to like the IDW continuity, probably in 2025, we'll probably get there at some point. But, you know, it that's... It on demand. It also is still relatively new. It's only like, you know, what, six years ago? So for, for that, yeah, for the revolution. Ago. Yeah. Well, 15 Friday. So does that answer your question, David? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the IDW, like the sort of the number of different series they did yeah. and the re restarting things yep. and the sheer volume of like variant covers. Yep. Do, I, do I don't think we can do it in less than three volumes. <laughs> yeah. At 144 pages. Yeah, we've been debating that at the table, haven't we? Like, yeah. How do we get through, through, through this, starting to eyeball it? Figure out what that's gonna take. Yep. Um, yeah. But yeah. Like, and I just said, like I just said, though, it will depend on demand. If if enough people want it, then these people want it. Well, this this group, this is everybody this here. Is want people it? in the room. Hey! <laughs> you want you want the IDW continuity started in 2008 that ended in 2019. You want that whole series, all those Cobra books done in uh, after origins. Yeah. 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 All those covers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can't talk about this last night, but if you all were to do an omnibus, mm -hmm. what would be in it? What would you cover? What eras? What brands? Well, yeah. well clearly, Carson set the standards <laughs> of that. <laughs> like a huge book. And obviously, with the amount of numbers that he got, well beyond his regular books that he got. I mean, you know, we're, we're kind of in the same category with uh, Dan Kay and Carson on the small books, right? Like his big book just blew the hell up and is amazing, right? I don't know if you guys have seen any of the stuff he's posted lately, but like that book is unbelievable. To do that, I don't know if we have the skills. Maybe we could hire Carson. I don't know if Carson, but, or at least we could get him to do it. But I would think that somewhere along the line we could probably do Omnibus. Any yeah. guys get the ideas? My, my overall feeling is that we'll probably reach 10 after action reports, not, not command files, because that's a separate thing, not, not with the adventure, that's a separate thing. But I like the comic guides, if that reaches 10, a volume of 10, I think we can do two omnibuses of the first five and the second five with a little bit more content in each of them and some updates as we go along. Because even after we finish books, we occasionally still find more information, so uh, we did correct that. And some of it's redundant because we, it appears in more than one book because it fits to more than one volume, and we would eliminate that so it would be just in, in the one, one book, or what, in there one time for that volume. So it would be that, that kind of thing, a little bit of streamlining with a little bit of new, but more than likely no more than five books per, per uh, omnibus. I would like to uh, do it all in one, but have it on luggage carts and handles, handle, so you can just <laughs> have, it, have it tilt right into the front. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wheels and all. <laughs> Let me show you my G.I. Joe collection. <laughs> Look at all these check marks I've acquired. <laughs> my collection is full. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is that, uh, like, like, because something like that then is, you're probably price point wise talking, you know, what, $80, $90, $100 minimum? It, it would probably be like the 150 and, range. Yeah, some of it would be redundant if you have the soft covers, but we, you know, we could mix it in there. I mean, obviously, you know, if you want to post on our Facebook group, you know, the after action report group, to, uh, maybe we start a, some, start a thread there and see what people want, you know? After action report, the history of comics. Right. And of course, you can always go to our website and buy the books. Um, now, um, Greg, Greg has also been handling um, our website. So th this is one of the, a, a, a new announcement that we're, we're going to do. So in volume one and in volume three, we between that, we spent more than nine pages talking about number 21, Silent Interlude, second printing. Nine pages for one comic. That is like a total big mystery. And this actually... Roger and I started this in 2020 before we even did these books in a hunt for to try to find out this, figure out this mystery. So what Greg and I are going to do is we're going to take all this new information that we found and we kind of figured out and I actually 
Tommy Hazelton, who has written an article and is kind of like a number 21 second printing expert, um, found some. So we actually have some in a bag. I have one in my collection now. And Roger has one that's in his collection that kind of helped prove this. And then we're going to put it on the website and we're going to build these pages in. We're going to be, after action reports, going to be the definitive place to go to find number 21 second printing information because ever, nobody knows and we're, we've been able to piece it together over the last four years now and we're going to put it up there. So that's like a new announcement there for everybody. And if you're on Facebook and any G.I. Joe comic book group, Every two weeks, somebody asks that question. Yeah. What, what's where's the second printing? What what is the second printing? Is why is there a third printing? Uh -huh. So so, so that's we're go, we're going to build this page hopefully in the next month or two and put that up there. So that will obviously it's on a website, so it's not going to be in the books. But much much of this information is already kind of in our books. Yeah, it'll just be collated into something you can yeah. to link to. And then you can link and be like, I know the answer. To the biggest mystery in G.I. Joe comics. <laughs> what happened to that second printing? I don't know. I, think, I personally think the biggest mystery is who's the bald <laughs> you want? He's just standing there. You never see him again. <laughs> uh, all right. There we go. Who's going to investigate that? Mark? All right. We'll, we'll put that in command files four. Yeah, and just plenty to do. Write, write a song about him. <laughs> That was actually a toilet wiper. He infiltrated the, the, the base. <laughs> it was all dressed for the toilet wiper. That's right. That's right. All right. Any more Any questions? questions? Seems as if okay. uh, the next panel is probably getting ready mm -hmm. or something. I'm okay. going to do it probably going next to Oh. 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 Hopefully, I, they didn't call my number. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Absolutely. Come. Come to our table and ask more questions. Thank you. Oh, come up and get your free stuff. Yes. Oh.